Hi guys. So here we're going to look at a nice application of vectors and that is in kinematics. So let me just introduce you to this using this beautiful picture of an airplane that I've drawn. Um, we can model the position of an airplane or a boat or anything moving in straight lines using vector equations. So for example, this um, this plane has position vector 750 plus t times minus 543 where t is the time. Now that could be in, in hours or seconds. I think in this particular case we're going to assume it's seconds. Now what's happening is the plane the plane has taken off. So let's say this is the the ground here. So his position vector is 750. So this point is like 750. Note 0 because that is well in this particular example the z axis is our kind of vertical axis in which the plane takes off. And 75 this is like your x coordinate and y coordinate on the ground but zero or the z coordinate is how far up in the air he is so after one second he is three meters in the air after 10 seconds he's 30 meters in the air and these two describe where he is on the in the xy plane so what happens is every second he travels this much negative 5 in the x direction, 4 in the y direction, and 3 in the z direction. So he's traveling this much, this vector, per second. So every second we're going to add this on. So think about what does that mean when you travel a, a certain amount or when your displacement is something per second. It means it's this is your velocity. So the direction vector, when, we're, when we write a vector equation of a line like this where where the parameter is actually the time this is the velocity and then the magnitude of this vector um, the magnitude of the direction vector which is our, it gives us the speed so the speed remember the speed is a scalar so that we don't need the direction so the speed is just 5 squared plus 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is square root of 25 plus 16 is 41 plus 9, which is 50. Exactly, square root of 50. So he's going at a speed of square root of 50 meters per second. So I don't know, is that fast for an airplane or not? Let me think. That would be approximately 7 meters per per second, that's probably not that fast for an airplane, but whatever, it's just an example. So that's what it means. That's kind of his starting point. That's his velocity. And then the whole equation gives us his position after any amount of time. So if I said to you, well, what's the plane's position after, um, I don't know, 100 seconds, you'd sub in a 100 there and you get his position vector. This obviously will model the plane from when he takes off until he reaches his kind of um, maximum altitude or whatever. And then obviously it, it changes this. Um, he, he's the, the, Z, the Z component would be zero again because he's just going to maintain that altitude. OK, that's um, a plane in 3D. This example here, I'm actually going to look at boats, which is more in two dimensions. So it says ship a leaves a port located at the origin and moves with a velocity 3i plus 5j guys whenever i have a question um whenever i have a question i like to whenever i have a question i like to draw a diagram just to see what's actually happening um hang on let me get rid of this i want to do this in black okay so Imagine I have 
here is my whatever it is my plane my um, set of axes and this ship is leaving the port and he's moving with a velocity of 3i plus 5j so let's say that's 3i 3i plus 5j something like this he's moving like this fine that direction and then ship B starts 18 kilometers north so he is moving well he's starting up here somewhere 18 kilometers north so directly north and he's moving at 4i minus 2j so let's go um, 4 minus 2 4 minus 2 something like that Okay, so he's going that direction, he's going that direction. It says, find the distance between the ships after two hours. Okay, so ship A leaves the port and he's moving with a velocity of 3i plus 5j. So ship A, we can model ship, ship A's path using this vector equation, or equals position vector 0, 0, he started at 0, 0 plus t times because um, we're looking at um, he's, it's kilometers per hour so every hour he moves um, every hour he is going to move 3i plus 5j so this becomes 3 3 5 so that's ship a's position vector after a given time and ship B's position after a given time will be R equal so he starts at 0 18 because he's 0 along the x-axis and 18 up here plus t times and his velocity is 4 minus 2 4 minus 2 like this so the question says find the distance between the ships after two hours so after two hours, after two hours, ship A, what is ship A's position vector? Well, ship A's position vector is 0, 0, plus 2 times, because it's now 2 hours, so T is 2. 2 times 3, 5, which is just um, 6, 10. So his position vector is 6, 10. And ship B, ship B's position vector is going to be 0, 018 plus 2 times 4, negative 2, which gives us 8, 8, um, and then 18 minus 4 is 14, 8, 14. That's his posi position vector. That's his position vector. Let me draw another little graph just to show you what's happening here so he is at this guy's at 610 so let's say um, 6 610 something like this that's his so his point is 610 and ship B his point is 8 8 14 so he's here at 8 14. So now we just have, those are the points, we now just have to find the distance between two points, which is, we know this formula, distance is equal to the square root of, um, it's this minus this squared plus this minus this squared, so it's 8 minus 6 squared plus 14 minus 10 squared. This is in the formula booklet, guys, if you don't know what I'm doing but hopefully you know the distance between two points formula by now. So this is going to be um, 4, that's 2 squared, plus 4 plus um, 4 squared, which is 16, giving us root 20 kilometers exactly. Okay, that's it. That's my lesson on vectors with kinematics and um, obviously the main things to note is we can we can use the vector of equation of a line to model the 
the path of some object, be it a plane or a ship or whatever it might be, we can do it in three dimensions and two dimensions. The position vector is, is kind of its starting point because it's like when t is zero, the initial his initial position. And then because I'm adding the direction vector, or I'm adding a direction vector for every given time, whether it's a second or a kilometer, that is by definition the velocity. And the magnitude of, of the velocity gives us the speed. That's it. Um, hope that all made sense. And I'll see you in the next lesson.